It's time for the Kim Hammer Show, where you'll learn how your state government affects you, your family, and community. Here's Kim Hammer. Good afternoon. Welcome uh, to the Kim Hammer Show here on 101.1 FM, The Answer. Or if you're joining us on Facebook Live, we welcome you to uh, the viewing audience. That's a beautiful Saturday afternoon. And first of all, let me just say congratulations to all the dads out there on this Father's Day weekend. We hope that you uh, have a great day with your family tomorrow and have a great weekend celebrating with your family as well. In fact, one of my guests that's going to be on here in just a little bit is a gentleman named Randy Jumper, who is with the Better Dads program. Uh, it is a program that's offered here in Arkansas to encourage and promote uh, better dads as far as being better fathers and better role models and being involved in your kid's life. And so we'll have Randy joining us here in just a little bit on the Kim Hammer Show. Let me start off by just saying thank you to the sponsors of the program, which would be Everett Buick GMC down in Saline County. If you're looking for a new or a certified used vehicle, Everett Buick GMC is a great place for you to go. Uh, not to mention also with regards to their service department, they give great trade-in value uh, on your used vehicle if you're looking to trade and upgrade. So. Uh, Everett Buick GMC there in Saline County on I-30 at Alco Road would be a great place for you to go and get your next new vehicle. Uh, then I also want to thank Phillips Penfield Mowdy Realtors here in Central Arkansas. They'll take care of all your real estate needs, whether you're looking to buy or to sell, or if you have property that you want to rent or you're looking for a place to rent, uh, they can take care of all your real estate needs at uh, Phillips Penfield Mowdy here in Central Arkansas. Uh, you can find them located down in Sling County at Highway 5 and Spring Hill Overpass. they got a great office, great staff, and they'll be more than happy to take care of your needs. And then always Edwards Food Store. We appreciate them uh, here in central Arkansas, all throughout central Arkansas, also over in east Arkansas. I was in their stores this past week, and they've got uh, excellent stores as far as cleanliness, price, and uh, well-stocked. Order online, and they'll uh, have curbside pickup for you. Or they also offer taking your your uh, groceries to the car, so you get everything you need there, and they are uh, uh, environmentally friendly as far as keeping their stores clean during this uh, pandemic dealing with COVID-19. Also, want to give a shout out uh, to Carrie Murphy. Next weekend, Carrie will have uh, Carrie Murphy uh, Productions. He'll have the gun show down there in Benton at the Benton Event Center. That's on Saturday and Sunday. You can go up to his website, Carrie Murphy Productions, and get all the information. And it'd be a great time uh, for you to go to uh, pick out a new gun or get ammunition or any of the supplies that uh, and accessories that go along with making sure that you're able to protect your family. And that's what it's really all about is being able to protect your family. But also, if you're an investor, a great place to go and pick up some um, pick up some deals on some good uh, guns that uh, you might just want to have just because they'd be good collector items. So. Kerry Murphy Productions will have his gun show next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, down at the Benton Event Center in Benton. And then tomorrow at noon here on 101.1, uh, I'll be bringing a message uh, for the church that I pastor, Sling Baptist down in Tull, and we're going to be focusing on fatherhood. So if you want to tune in tomorrow here at noon, or you can catch it uh, Facebook, but it'll be delayed. And uh, just a side note for those of you that follow on Sundays, we, uh, as a church, have purchased or in the process of purchasing the equipment so we can do our services Facebook Live, and you'll be able to catch that at Celine MBC, like missionarybaptistchurch.org, or you can just go up to my personal Facebook page or to the Kim Hammer Show Facebook page, and uh, you'll be able to go to the section on my, on my personal on my show page. I've actually got a spiritual section that you can click on, and it'll have the, um, it has a daily devotion on there as well as the Sunday sermon. So encouraged to go there if you'd like to get a little spiritual charge. On uh, just a couple notes before we have Randy join us here in just a few minutes. This past week at the Capitol was what we call ALC week, which is the uh, Arkansas Legislative Council. They're the body of the legislative branch that meets when we're not in any of the sessions, whether it's fiscal or special or the general session. And we pretty much take care of the business at hand uh, with regards to any changes that need to be made to the law. There are various subcommittees that make up ALC. We meet all through the week and then come together on Friday and, um, you know, kind of wrap up the business, so to say, of the week. And there was a couple things that I just wanted to bring to your attention that were addressed this week because they've been in the news. Uh, one of them is regarding the Buffalo watershed. And this all started back under the BB administration when they issued a permit from ADQ for an operation called CNH Hog Farm to operate up in uh, up in the uh, 
Um, lost my mind there for a second, Ben, in the uh, Buffalo River. Thank you, area in the watershed up there. And so this goes back to the BB administration when they uh, allowed ADQ to issue that permit. And ever since, it's uh, been kind of a growing controversy. It's been in the news a lot in the past week. There's what was called Rule 5, Rule 6, which would have been a permanent uh, uh, would have been a permanent ban, if you would, on hog farms of that size in the Buffalo watershed. And I just want to clarify a few things because over the last several years, I've sat in all those meetings because they come before public health and I serve on public health and then I'm on ALC. So I sat through the subcommittee meeting this week in rules, plus I sat in the committee on Friday. And one of the things I just want to clarify to make sure there's no misunderstandings is that as it is right now, uh, there is a there is a standing ability to prevent any hog farms from going into the Buffalo watershed. And if you want to just say this was going to be like an extra layer of protection, but it's really not a required layer of protection because it already exists. It actually existed back in the BB era whenever the initial permit was given. It just wasn't exercised. And so there was some a lot of debate this week as to whether or not we needed to do that. And it was the consensus of the legislative branch that we didn't because it was already in place and it's already there to be exercised as far as any hog farm of that size being able to go into that area. Some of the debate that's gone on over the last couple years is that when you look at other watershed areas, uh, would this be duplicated across the state? I think that's why you would see that Farm Bureau came to the table and spoke against it because this is an encroachment onto farming specifically with regards to livestock. And as a result of that, what is needed in order to protect the Buffalo watershed is in place. Now, there would be some debate as to whether that is enough. Is it stringent enough? There is an opinion that's going to be requested just to verify this. But for all the debate that went on this week and for the vast majority of the legislators, all of which love the Buffalo River and many of which have floated the Buffalo River, the one thing the public needs to understand, regardless of whatever you may read somewhere, is that the ability to prevent it is already in place. And so we felt it was a little bit, or at least I'll speak on behalf of myself, I thought it was a little bit redundant, especially if that could be taken and applied to other watersheds in the state, which would be a severe encroachment on the ability for farmers to be able to raise livestock. And so that was just a little bit of background from somebody that's been there listening to those meetings for the last three or four years uh, and I want to say one thing that the present administration inherited this mess and the current legislative branch inherited this mess, but we feel that it's come to a place to where uh, they'll, you'll not see any more hog farms to the magnitude of CNH hog farm uh, that was allowed in the, in the uh, watershed area up there. All right, that being said, and one other thing, and then we'll get Randy on the phone. A lot of discussion going on around the nation about monuments, and uh, we'll have that discussion on a show in the near future, but let me just say this, with regard to any monuments that are on the Capitol grounds, no monument, any monument on the Capitol grounds can be removed from the Capitol grounds without the permission of the legislative branch. It would have to be enacted in law in order for a monument to be removed from the Capitol ground. By the same token, no monument can be added to the Capitol grounds without legislation created by the legislative branch in order to be able to put a new monument on the Capitol grounds. So when it comes to all the monuments, including the Confederate monument or the Little Rock Nine or the Vietnam or any of the other monuments, those are protected in that it would take a piece of legislation to remove any of those from the Capitol grounds. The reason I know that is because I ran that piece of legislation. And so it, before everybody gets worked up about anything around the Capitol grounds with regards to the monuments there, just know that that's what it would take. What happens in cities and municipalities is up to the local level to decide. If you don't like what's going on, voice your opinion, vote them out, and uh, get somebody new in there that's got some fresh perspective. With that being said, let's go on and talk about something a little bit lighter topic, and that is Better Dads. And we have Randy Jumper with the Better Dads program on the radio at this time and randy thank you for taking some time out on saturday to be on the kim hammer show to talk about better dads thanks mr hammer it's my honor and privilege to be able to be on this call with you so give the people a little bit of an idea of what is better dads how did it get started and what your role is in the better dad program 
Absolutely. Um, and it is good in this uh, Father's Day weekend to sort of talk about some things that are that are positive and that are things that are happening in our state and our local community and our families that are making a difference. Studies um, done both by uh, academic organizations, government agencies, religious groups across the board over the last 30 to 50 years have consistently come back with data that says something that most, I would say most Arkansans already know without the studies, and that is families are stronger and children are better prepared for their future when there's an active presence of a father figure who is working in their lives. Now, there's all kinds of uh, explanations, questions, and what does that mean? The next thought to what does an active father look like? But um, what's great about Arkansas and what's great about Arkansans is that when I survey the state, when I travel around, we have pockets of challenges and difficulties, but overwhelmingly, Arkansans are pro-family and are doing what they can to help uh, build a strong family. And I'm sure the, the people who live in Swing County, I, I'm a Bryant High School graduate. I remember uh, how important my dad was in my life. And um, in cooperation with the state legislature, as well as uh, our governor and the Arkansas Division of Workforce Services, a couple years ago, some, some sort of proactive steps to help kids have better relationships with their dads was formulated. Uh, TANF is a federal program called Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. Uh, it is a federal program that, that allows uh, tax dollars to be used not only to help people who have financial difficulties, but to also do the preventative maintenance, to work on the front end. And from a government, from a uh, explanation side, which is the boring stuff. I love to get in and talk about families and kids and dads, but from that side of it, what it is is this. Um, a child who grows up in a family structure with a father figure more active is 279% less likely to carry guns and do drugs and be arrested. They're twice as likely if the dad is out to have physical problems like obesity and end up on government-funded health care. The education of uh, statistics are off the charts that when a father is active in their child's life, they're statistically more likely to graduate from high school with good grades, to get a college education, and have a, a high-paying, performing job. And so TANF... Um, seeing that they can maybe get ahead of it, and the state of Arkansas getting ahead of it says, we don't want to put people on welfare. We don't want to, we don't want to subsidize the back end. Let's do the front end, and let's help dads become better dads here in Arkansas. And that's what sort of the, the genesis and the ideas behind Arkansas Better Dads was how can we put tools and resources in the hands of local communities and local families to make better, to make better dads and better families. You know, the original design that started with the beginning uh, built the structure around a strong male role model in the home. And as that home would expand to add children, even more important is that the dad in the home uh, would take on a strong leadership role as far as providing the example for the kids to follow in. So when you talk yeah. about uh, the tools and the resources that you just mentioned what are you talking about as far as the tools and the resources that better dads make available to people? Sure. You know, I, again, my conviction is that um, I trust I trust that embedded inside of the vast majority of men and fathers are the natural instincts and the uh, instincts they can learn to, to be a better role model in influencing their kids' lives. And I, I kind of break it down this way. There's lots of data about bad dads out there. There's plenty of stories and sitcoms and TV shows that that move from the lampooning comic of a Homer Simpson to an absent father to all those things. And sure, those stories are out there. But but you know, uh, Mr. Hammer, the more I've traveled, the more I meet active dads. Dads who are trying. And so we use it. We what the the spirit of better dads is that our goal is not to make uh, every dad a 10. 
Uh, we're just trying to get you better. And so what I think is, that sure, if a scale of 1 to 10, there's some dads who are zeros, ones, and twos. And those guys, they, they're failing at their job. They're failing at their responsibility. And they, and they, and they need some serious uh, help. And then there's some nines and tens out there, probably you, probably your family. They're just they're doing it. They're, they're doing everything they can, and they're the people to point to. But the majority of dads in Arkansas, four, five, six, and seven, they're the guys who are just they're working maybe two jobs or they come home after working at the factory all day or out in the yard and they're exhausted. They know that they want to be in their kids' lives and they don't know what to do and how to do it. They feel guilty. At the same time, they feel motivated. And so Arkansas Better Dads has put together some resources as well as partnered with existing organizations like the National Fatherhood Institute to put tools in guys' hands just to help them to know how to better talk to their kids, how to better listen to their kids how can they repurpose and be re- creative with the things that already exist um we we have a a better dad challenge that we're just saying hey guys this is the commitment we want you to make we want you to be a positive role model we want you to lead your family uh, we want you to love your kid unconditionally we want you to take responsibility for your actions and, and here's how you do it if you make a mistake you ask for your child's forgiveness but you model healthy you champion their dreams and you stay involved in their lives and those kinds of things are happening we have also discovered and it's my conviction that that the men and parents in benton know better how to raise and what they need in their community than than any government agency uh, especially one that's distanced all the way to washington dc so what we do is we find local organizations boys and girls clubs Kiwanis groups, rotaries, local churches, uh, even schools, uh, head starts, programs like that, and say, hey, what do you want to do? How do you want to help your men? And we form- formulated uh, policies that enable them to be able to find tools and resources and present them. Now, if they don't have any ideas, sure, we got great ones. We have an amazing uh, curriculum called Championship Dads that's free. It's all online. It's available to us, especially with COVID taking place. We put all the teaching videos on our website, uh, on our Facebook page. You, know, you can go through the whole curriculum in less than an hour, four 15-minute videos, and just basic tips of how to be a better dad. Go ahead, and what's that uh, website? Because Ben is sitting here, and we can get that up on our uh, website, hopefully, today here in just a little bit. So. Uh, for, for people to come to and look at. What, it, what is the website that they can go to see that? It's real simple. It is AR Better Dads spelled out. So ARBetterDads.com. And you can also follow us there on our social media page, Arkansas Better Dads, and our YouTube channel. All those are available. All that curriculum is up there. Uh, all that is available. Men can go on and take that Better Dad Challenge there. They can make that commitment to date. We have a right around 3,000 fathers in the state of Arkansas who have committed uh, to taking uh, the Better Dad Challenge. So far in the last 12 months, we have had every county in Arkansas now respond. Either someone in that county taking that challenge or uh, a some sort of training or activity that has taken place in every one of those. And that, like I said, ranges from everything from a Head Start uh, reading program to a local church that did a Father's Day outreach or to a uh, school district that did a program to help their low-income families uh, who needed mentoring for students with, with a father figure. Oh, a minute ago, I asked you about resources, and there's the website. But as far as things that you put in people's hands, whether it be books or guides or other things, what what do you offer that, uh, or what could you recommend? Let me even put it that way: that for a, you know, for a man who wants to be a better dad, what resources would you point them toward, or do you have available that you could put in their hands? Absolutely. The first step I would say is go to arbetterdads.com and go through the championship dads curriculum. Uh, like I said, it's four sessions. It's four 15-minute videos. Uh, there's workbooks you can download. There's teacher guides. It's designed so that uh, if you want to get a group of five or ten guys together, or maybe you have a local men's group in your church or uh, in your civic club or something like that, all of it's free. Um, 
uh, that was kind of the, the driving force, and I appreciated the governor and the state legislature at ADWS uh, getting behind it. We, we dissolved the cost factors because we didn't want anyone to be prevented uh, from getting this curriculum and training. That's a great, those are great resources. You can also go, uh, there's a book that I really, really uh, in, encourage men to read. Uh, and you can get that through our website as well. Uh, it's a book, How to Talk to Your Kids About. It's from a local author. His name's Brian Dollar, D-O-L-L-A-R. Uh, he's a local faith leader in our community, and he's written a book and a curriculum entitled How to Talk to Your Kids About designed to help a dad talk through issues like sexuality, integrity, even spirituality, uh, talk about race issues, marriage, just some tips that are on how to talk to your kid about these areas. Another really, really good resource is a book by John Eldridge. Um, it says, You Have What It Takes, What Every Father Needs to Know by John Eldridge. These are books as well. And we partner with the federal government. They have a program called the National Fatherhood Initiative, and we have tons of their resources uh, that go from it. I think a really great author right now in this field is a guy named Kerry Casey, uh, just outstanding writer and written some great books. One of his books is every Five Things Every Dad Should Know. Cool. All right, so i got to ask you, um, a minute ago you were reading off some of the uh, principles that you try to instill in men in order to become a better dad. And if I didn't know better, I would have said you got that right out of the Bible uh, because everything you described <laughs> is actually in the Bible. So are we talking about spiritual stuff, practical stuff, as far as materials, all of the above? Because um, what is the basis for what you're trying to communicate as far as the ingredients that go into making a better dad? Sure, that's a, that's a fair assessment. I, I would say the first thing that we begin with as a state and a federal program, recognizing all of the necessary uh, distances that we take between spiritual instruction and practical instruction. At the same time, I'll confess to all, you, to all your listeners, I am a pastor. Uh, and as one of the primary authors of quite a bit of this curriculum that we've written, um, my my understanding of fatherhood is built on my 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 religion and my spiritual interaction with my heavenly Father. So, uh, to separate that uh, out of the materials would be virtually impossible. Um, and we, we we take great good steps to do that for the necessary things that we should do for the separation of uh, church and state and those components. At the same time, this is a faith based um, initiative uh, that has been federally funded as such and as a state one. So while we are careful not to be overt with what we do, we are not also required to deny who we are. And so we work with local churches as well. Um, and we, we use wisdom and we use uh, care and to make sure that we aren't doing anything that violates any legislation or federal laws or state statutes. But what we can do is work with different groups. And you're right. Uh, most of the things that come out of this Better Dad Challenge have roots in, um, in, in the Bible and because integrity is what the Bible is about. And so uh, taking care of your family is a biblical value. Um, showing your child love through words and actions is something that was modeled throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, challenging your child to grow is there. And we have both available and both are able to be used in I'm happy to do so, um, but I'm grateful that we live in a state, grateful that we have leadership in our government that recognizes that uh, values are important, and what those values are built upon are also important and can't be denied. So, yes, the short that's the long answer. The short answer is, of course, these values as a person who is a, a local pastor are obviously influenced by, by my view of scriptures and my view of the Lord. Uh, at the same time, many non-religious organizations and groups use our materials as well. Okay. Hey, can you hold over for a minute through the bottom of the hour? We need to take a quick break. Can you hang on a second? Absolutely. Okay. So let me uh, leave it with this and then we'll get the, we'll get the break in and the audience come back and join us because we're actually going to have, I'm going to, I'm going to merge in somebody, you know, that you're on uh, good friends with, 
and that's Rhonda Sanders from over at the uh, Central Arkansas Food Bank. And I want to kind of blend the conversations for just a second because one relates to the other. But I would say this. Um, the one thing I know about Better Dads is that while it is rooted and founded in basic principles that are both practical but also incorporate spiritual and emotional sides to it, it's not preachy. It doesn't come across as forcing anything on you. In fact, if anything, I think it whets the appetite in order to create the environment for you want to listen uh, from people that are in the business of being better dads and share with you what they have learned from multiple sources on how to be a better dad. We'll pick up the subject Absolutely. when we come back after the break. You're listening to the Kim Hammer Show here on 101.1 FM, The Answer. The Saline County Gun and Knife Show will be held at the Benton Event Center like no other show with over 280 tables of firearms, knives, and ammo, door prizes, and a drawing for a rifle, boats, trucks, and food out front. So come out to the Saline County Gun and Knife Show, Saturday 9 to 5, Sunday 9 to 4 at the Benton Event Center. $10 adults, age 11 to 15, $5, and age 10 and under are free. Discounts for military and police. Sponsored by Kerry Murphy Promotions, Big Jake's Tire, and Arkansas Marine. America has been doing some soul searching lately. Perhaps you noticed we're examining what's right with America and what can be made better. No other country does this kind of introspection better than us. Some of what we found we don't like and will change. Every life has the right to be treated with dignity and respect. That includes our law enforcement as well as every skin color. We've been through this before in America. And we always came out stronger. We will this time too. Our hosts will make sure of that. 101.1 FM, The Answer. Take the answer with you anywhere with our free mobile app, 1011fmtheanswer.com. Tune in, iHeart, or radio.com. Breaking news and stimulating talk. 101.1 FM, The Answer. Hey, it's Dave Ellswick. I'll be heading out to the Republican National Convention in August on the 24th, and we want your business to be included with us. All you have to do is to call 501-404-6545, and your business can be part of all the excitement of the renomination of Donald Trump for the Republican Party for president. We'll be there. We'll give you everything that's happening every moment that it's going on. Right here on 1011 FM, The Answer. Are you open for business? Tell us about it. Call 501-404-6545. That's 501-404-6545. And we will spread the good news. East End Towing, how can I help? I have a flat tire. Can you help with that? Yes, ma'am. No problem. Bye-bye. Oh, my daughter... Oh, she just locked my keys in my car. Ma'am, it's going to be okay. We can handle that as well. Wow, you guys can do everything. Can you guys make my kids listen? East End Towing. Anything, anytime, anywhere. Except getting your kids to listen to you. Call 888-8849. Hi, this is Gordon Deal. Join me weekdays for This Morning, America's First News. Hear the stories you'll be talking about and searching for all day as we go beyond the headlines and above the chatter with your first look at breaking news, money, Washington politics, technology, entertainment, entrepreneurship, and sports. We explain why stories matter. That's why we are referred to as the most important and relevant radio program. Join us weekdays for This Morning, America's First News. Welcome back to the Kim Hammer Show here on 101.1 FM, The Answer. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, sponsors of the program include Everett Buick, GMC. Uh, you can go down there to Saline County there on I-30 at Elko Road and get a great new Buick GMC product or buy from their certified line or get your service done. They've got a great uh, reception area that you can sit in there and wait while you get your uh, vehicle worked on and they are environmentally friendly as far as dealing with all this COVID stuff, the social distancing, all the other recommendations. Uh, on Realtors, Penfield, I'm sorry, Phillips, Penfield, Mowdy, great place for you to uh, go and get your real estate needs taken care of, whether you're buying, selling, you want to rent, or you've got something you want to rent, either one. Uh, they can take care of all your needs. They are very professional, very trustworthy, and uh, I would encourage you just to look them up if you have needs for real estate here in Central Arkansas. And then Edwards Food Stores here in Central Arkansas over in East Arkansas is always a Great clean stores with good competitive prices, uh, friendly staff, clean stores. My gosh, they are clean uh, stores and uh, curbside service. Plus, you can order online and they'll bring it out to you. So it's a great place for you to get all your grocery store needs met. want to remind you that next weekend, 
down at the Benton Event Center that Kerry Murphy Productions will be presenting uh, one of his gun shows. Uh, they've got a slew of vendors. They've submitted their plan to the Department of Health, got approval. So, you know, it'll be a safe environment, both physically, but also from every other aspect for you to be there. And uh, you can stock up on guns or ammunition or any of the accessories that go along with it. Uh, Kerry runs, does a really good job running those gun shows, and I encourage you it'd be a great weekend uh, for you to get out and just go check all that out. Then tomorrow here on 101.1 FM at noon, I'll uh, present a message and I uh, will be uh, preaching on uh, dads because it is Father's Day and being uh, bringing a message that's challenging to dads uh, from the Word of God. So I invite you to tune in uh, tomorrow at noon here on 101.1 FM, The Answer. Just a sidebar before we get back to uh, Randy Jumper with Better Dads, we're going to bring on uh, Rhonda Sanders with the uh, Central Arkansas Food Bank here uh, based out of Little Rock. Uh, just remind you that um, Trump rally is going to be tonight in Tulsa. Uh, they're expecting over 20,000. I'm watching on Fox News. It looks like uh, they're they're just a normal crowd milling around with no trouble out there. So uh, just if you want to maybe kind of follow that tonight. And uh, I don't I don't think there's uh, when you, when you put this group of people together, I don't think you're going to have the problems that you see when some other groups have gotten together over the last couple of weeks. So uh, it ought to be something interesting to follow. So with all that being said, let's get back on uh, Better Dads. And uh, Randy, thank you for hanging through from the bottom of the hour. And let me just, uh, let me just ask you about something. Um, why do you think healthy dads? You mentioned about there's all sorts of stories out there about, you know, situation involving dads who maybe aren't living up to their responsibility as being the best dad they can. Why, why do you think that healthy dads and healthy examples are under attack the way they are? You mentioned about all the shows that focus on, you know, the the uh, dysfunctionality of the fatherhood role. Why do you think that the the dads that are doing it right though are under attack? That's a great question, and I I I wish I could give you a solid, concrete answer. I can tell you my opinion. Here's what I think. I think that. Um, I think there is a pervasive sort of ethos in the world right now, Western civilization, especially American culture, that is undermining the family as a whole. And uh, the best way to the best way to destroy something you're working against is to undermine the central point and uh, the father figure. Um, as the linchpin of this situation, as proven by all these studies, uh, seems to be the easy target. Uh, I do think it's fascinating that if you go back just in pop culture and television, um, my dad's generation, uh, my grandparents' generation, their television shows were things like My Three Sons. Uh, they were things like Ozzy and Harriet. They were... Andy Griffith. Leave it to... Andy Griffith. Leave it to Beaver. They were... Strong male roles, uh, central figures who that even if they made mistakes in the show storyline, eventually came to the right conclusion, did the right thing, uh, asked for forgiveness of their families, and moved to positive behavior. Uh, well, that that probably stereotype was overplayed because there were plenty of bad dads around as well at that time. But then that has slowly morphed to that when I was a kid growing up, the dads on television for me and my generation were uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Homer Simpson and, uh, you know, these horrible shows like Married with Children that where the father was derelict and lampooned and became a comedic figure. And so um, I think some of that's... Uh, purposeful, but I think most of it's just subtle as well. And then I would also add that sadly, a lot of men uh, sort of embraced that idea. They embraced that concept and sort of perpetuated it. And so um, I think it's an attack on the family overall. Um, I think that there are people who are working against what it means to be a good father. You know, uh, let me say this, and then we're going to transition, bring Rhonda into the discussion because there's there, I think there's a bridge that brings you and her together. But, you know, you talked about the TV shows you mentioned a while ago, which it's not only just TV shows. The one thing I've noticed is in the commercials, the way in which the dad has been minimized or being mocked or being, uh, you know, relinquishing his role over, you know, to others in the household. And it's almost like that 30-second that blast that over time is just like, 
like a, a powerful stream of water eroding a boulder that they just keep beating away at it. And I, I think that Satan, and I'll be just so bold as to say, I think one of Satan's strategy has always been is to destroy the foundation of the home and the dad is the cornerstone of the foundation of that home. And so whether it's through the TV shows or whether it's through the commercials and, and, you know, we've kind of become uh, like the frog in the kettle immune to it, to where we just kind of over a period of time, maybe through apathy or just letting down our guard. Uh, I think even Christians have, you know, fallen into that trap of just kind of laughing those things away uh, while Satan is just slowly destroying our nation by destroying the family, by, by minimizing the role of the dad. Yeah, and I think the answer is exactly with what you're about to talk through with Rhonda is my response for men, because I get asked this question a lot in different versions, is this. Um, I really don't care what Hollywood says I'm supposed to be. I'm pretty well sure what my kids need me to be. There you go. And so what I can do is I can lead for my family and meet those expectations and those standards. I can engage my community. I can teach my kids to care about others as much as we care about ourselves. I can have them to put people who are hurting first. And the antidote is not for us to pull down the constructs of the of the world. Our our answer, our antidote, is for us just to step up and be better dads. Yep. And to partner and work like great organizations like Food Bank so that we can make a difference. All right. So let's, uh, you know, if we didn't know better, we rehearsed this. So let's segue into Rhonda. I've got Rhonda Sanders, who is the – Rhonda, your CEO. Is that the right title? Yes, sir. All right. Rhonda is the CEO for the Food Bank of Central Arkansas – uh, actually had her on uh, the show when I hosted for Dave Ellswick uh, about a week ago. Uh, you were you were good to join me at 6 in the morning, and I appreciate that. I want you to know. Um, <laughs> but Rhonda is the CEO of the Central Arkansas Food Bank. And so the way I want to kind of segue Randy's conversation into a conversation with Rhonda is uh, you said something a minute ago as far as you were you were. Uh, saying, Randy, that, you know, some dads are, are 9 and 10 when you survey state, some are 0, uh, but uh, there are those dads in the middle that are, you know, maybe between the 4 and 6, and part of being a dad, if you're going to be the provider that you're supposed to be to your home, is sometimes you get the pressure of having to provide the resources that are difficult to come by, uh, and I think maybe that's where the food bank plays an important part in helping the family. Uh, so, Rhonda, let me, let me ask you, uh, update us on where you are as far as the volume of food that you're putting out as uh, the food bank, of which there's five of y'all or six in the state. There are five Feeding America food banks and uh, and then one additional partner that's with one of the food banks. So uh, we, we count us all as six of us. So Okay. And you've got uh, 39 counties here in central Arkansas. Is that right? Am I close uh, on that number? 30, 33. 33. 33. Okay. Okay. Central, southern goes all the way down to the southeast corner. Okay, so what about the volume of food that you're that you're having to put out now, or that you have to put out? Tell us a little bit about where you are now. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we are continuing to see that uh, we're about thirty percent ahead of where we were last year. So, uh, on a on a on a big picture scale, we did thirty million pounds last year. If we continue down this path, we will be close to thirty eight or thirty nine million pounds. Uh, that's a significant increase. That is a significant increase from where we've been, and that's a lot to manage all at one time, that much growth. So have you got the new addition finished up yet where the volunteers are going to work to box the food, or where are you on that? Almost. We are um, expecting that to be finished in mid-July. They're looking at July 17th, so we are very excited. Yeah. So, and I saw on the news last night, I think up in Northwest Arkansas, they, uh, the food bank in conjunction with UAMS, uh, gave out like over 200 boxes of food. So, uh, tell people about the process of the food getting to you, through you, and out the door. And Randy, what I'm going to ask you to be prepared to weigh in on here in a minute is that if your dad's struggling in the home trying to do the best you can, you mentioned about dad's working two jobs. Uh, about the challenges and the stresses it puts on the dad in the home whenever you've got to deal with paying the bills and providing food onto the table. But, Rhonda, talk about how the food gets to you, how it gets through you, and how it gets out the door. Yes, sir. Uh, we get food from multiple sources. Uh, some of it comes from local donations, uh, like Skippy Peanut Butter and Riceland. Uh, we get donations from further away through our Feeding America partnerships. 
Uh, we also have been fortunate to get produce uh, that is coming out of the fields all over the nation that is unmarketable. We get a lot of food from our retail stores like Edwards and Harps and uh, Kroger and, and Walmart uh, are very generous. We have wonderful organizations that do food drives for us. And then, of course, um, we get government food uh, from the commodities program. And then we have to purchase uh, a part of the food that, that we are able to get. So we acquire it. We get it. We bring it into our warehouse. Uh, we sort through it. We uh, put it together in boxes as needed. We sometimes put it together in kits for backpacks. Uh, and then it goes out to our agencies all over our 33 counties. We have about 320 agencies and about 80 schools that serve people directly. Uh, and then there are times, and recently during the COVID crisis, we have had to do more direct distribution where we actually take the food out into the community and set up a mobile site and do that. We did that last week in Elaine, Arkansas, and we served 500 families in one afternoon. That's incredible that you're serving 500 mm -hmm. families. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the volunteer area that you are going to have finished in mid-July, talk about that and how people get involved in volunteering. Okay. Yes, uh, our volunteers help us on numerous, numerous fronts. Uh, most of what they do is to sort product that comes in that needs to be sorted into groups of vegetables, fruits, baking items, things like that. Then they help us box that product and get it ready to either go to an agency or to box product that goes directly to a client that has a mixture of items in it for a client. They help make backpacks. They've been helping box uh, senior packs that we are sending out. Uh, they label cans for us. They bag fruit and produce, other vegetables that we get in. So there's numerous things that they do, and they actually account for right now around 21 full-time positions that we would have to hire uh, in order to make up for the hours that our volunteers put in for us. You mentioned the phrase unmarketable a while ago as far as some of the produce. That doesn't mean that it's tainted or anything's wrong with no. it, but what do you mean by unmarketable that you end up um, receiving it? Yes. Uh, most of your retailers have a standard for the average size they want a cucumber to be, the average color, or the average size and shape of a potato, a carrot. Uh, those are marketable. They're what we're used to seeing on our shelves when we go in and we want that pretty fruit uh, and those pretty vegetables. Uh, but there's a whole lot that's grown that's outside of those standards. And those items uh, in the past have just been thrown away, uh, tilled under. You know, nobody wants them. Uh, but over the past five to ten years, uh, the food banks around the nation have really started uh, working, uh, building a system to acquire that when it's coming out of the field. Uh, it's the stuff that doesn't fit the standard for your Walmart and your Kroger and all your local grocery stores. Uh, and then we have to pay transportation, and we have to pay what's called a BAP charge, which is like uh, some packaging, uh, some of the help to get it out of the field. And then uh, we can bring it in and at a much lower rate than what we would have to pay a full retail or something on it in order to share with, with clients. It's wonderful, wonderful product. So you've heard about uh, food deserts in Arkansas. Is that a real deal or is that just uh, um, just somebody's idea as far as food no, deserts? It's very real. There are a lot of our small towns that you will go into and there is not a local grocery store. Um, let's talk about Elaine, where we were last week. There aren't very many options in Elaine. Um, you know, they may have a very small market, uh, but that market is typically uh, higher priced than what, you know, your stores are in, in uh, urban areas. They, their fruits or vegetables may be a little bit older because they don't move as quickly. Uh, lots of times the only thing that's here is a convenience store. And while our convenience stores are starting to carry more nutritious foods, that's still not enough to serve that community. So the only source may be their pantry, especially for the low-income families who lack transportation. Um, that us coming in and having a solid pantry or mobile distribution may be one of the only ways they can acquire food. Okay. And you as the food bank and Randy as the Better Dads have mm -hmm. partnered before uh, yes. because you do share kind of common cause as far as mm -hmm. goals and objectives. How is it that you all have partnered before to work together? Uh, uh, Randy, you, may, you 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 take this one, Randy. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say first, 
we partnered in that she takes the 6 a.m. phone radio things. That is definitely <laughs> what she gets to do. There you go. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> now, that's not being a very good male role model, Randy. Come on, man. <laughs> hey. Hey. So that's funny. we have, not only with Arkansas Better Dads, but with, with my role and the different things we've done in our community, we've, we've partnered with uh, – with the food bank and then one of the an earlier iteration back before with the rice depot on numerous outreaches serial drive for example in the middle of it and all that's going on with those things and different projects as well as providing volunteers and been privileged a couple times to serve on the some advisory boards for that program and been able to do some fundraising and different pieces for that. I would just say this. I think my one contribution to this conversation, specifically to fathers, is um, I'm grateful that we live in a country, in a community that helps take care of each other, that puts yeah. others first. And I, I would say this to any dad out there who is struggling to put food on his kid's table uh, and feels like he's less of a man or less of a father because he's struggling to provide. Let me just challenge that thinking for a second and say this. Uh, there are great organizations. There are great churches. There are great food pantries. There are great food banks. There are p- people out there who their their goal is to help people through the process. And going to get help when you need it is not a sign of weakness of a father. It's a sign of strength. And it's saying, hey, I'm going to do what it takes to get my family where they need to be because I know that my ego, my pride is not as important as a nutritious meal in my child's stomach and helping them move forward for that. Secondly, I'd say for those dads out there who aren't in this situation, this is the exact kind of organization that you can partner with where you can come do a food sorting place. You can come help make meal kits. You can come put together the things that they're they're, You can do that together as a family. Um, Schools have done an outstanding job of putting uh, their kids, giving them service projects. But one of the things we try to do is we want the family to serve together. I want my daughters to, to not only, uh, learn the importance of civic activity. I want them to do civic activity with me. I want them to see their dad uh, sorting boxes and measuring out cheese powder and pouring it into a bag of noodles and and sealing it so that kids who are hungry can get it. Uh, This is what makes our organizations great. This is what makes our state great, and it's what makes families great, is those who have help people who don't. And those who don't go and get what they need until they have the opportunity that they can give back. Well, you hit on two, two thoughts that I'll summarize in two words. And, and one is stigma and the other one is pride. And, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking as a, as a provider to the home, as a dad, cause I, I'm call me old fashioned. I think the dad ought to be the provider to the home as far as at least setting the example of accepting that responsibility. But, Even if a dad is in a situation where he might have to go and receive help from like the food bank, there are ways in which you can pay back, if you would, by volunteering, which I think is important as a man to maintain that self-esteem and to be able to know that you did something to contribute, even if that's volunteering your time. Rhonda, tell about uh, about the program you've got as far as how people can pick a time to come over there and volunteer and and, uh, do that online and all that kind of technical stuff. Talk about it for a quick second. We do have the ability to sign up to volunteer online. You go to our website, ArkansasFoodBank.org, and under the uh, tab that says, I want to help, I want to get involved, you can click there and you can see our various opportunities. Uh, We will be opening back up for volunteers in mid-July, and hopefully things will get back to normal. Uh, On a typical month, we have two Tuesday nights, maybe it's one Tuesday night a month. It is a family night, and it is made just for what Randy is saying, coming together as a family with younger children to teach them how to give back. And, uh, oh, our families love that. Um, You know, now you can always come on a Saturday uh, as a family. Your children have to be a little bit older. I think it's around age 11, 12 for them to come with you. Uh, like that. But on a family night, you know, we let them come in with children, you know, five, six years old, seven years old, so they can start very early. 
uh, in training them to give and uh, showing them what that civic responsibility looks like and coming as a family. And we have so many who do that, and it is, uh, it's really good to see. All right. So, Rhonda, do you have any comments about what Randy said a minute ago uh, with regards to, uh, you know, the dad accepting the role in, in my response as far as, you know, I, I just think that sometimes even with people getting a box of food, there's a stigma that people mm-hmm. kind of, you know, prejudge somebody that has to yeah. take a box of food at a time in their life when maybe they're just unemployed like a lot of people are now. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and that's one of the hard things. The people that come to our food pantries aren't just jumping up and down to be there. When we go out and talk to them, they're all setting their sights on the goal that they won't ever have to come back. Uh, but sometimes life doesn't give you that opportunity. You know, sometimes you lose jobs. We have had several who have lost jobs. And, um, and, and the cool thing about our pantries, too, I will tell you, is that a lot of those that are coming uh, on a regular basis to a pantry are also staying and volunteering uh, because they do believe in that ethic of giving back. Uh, so it is important uh, for our for our parents, our dads, to uh, feel that responsibility and hold themselves accountable. Uh, but don't let pride get in the way. And uh, you know, we we treat everyone with dignity when they come. We know they're not jumping up and down to be there. And our pantries go out of the way to to uh, show them love and care and compassion, and uh, and help them where they are. And Randy, I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken, call me out uh, on live radio. Just go ahead and take me down there if you want to. But I think don't you all provide materials that are actually placed in the boxes over at the food bank? So if people want to know more about Better Dads and they happen to get a box, that that material's in there that can can help them find their way to you as well. I know we have provided them in the past. I think I don't know where we're at in the process right now, but I know that's been done in the past through ADWS. Yeah. So we can we can follow up on that later. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, all right. We're, we're more than glad to do things like that. So. Okay. Well, one of the reasons I want to bring y'all two together on the show today is because uh, you're both meeting needs. You both are excellent programs, and for anybody that's interested in getting involved in having. Uh, you know, two positive programs in your community, these would be two great ones for you to to identify. Um, so real quick, uh, Ron, to tell people that if there's if there's not a food pantry in their area, what do they need to do to see about going about getting a food pantry? And I'll give you about one minute to tell them. Uh, once again, you can go to our website, ArkansasFoodBank.org. And uh, on that main page, you can look around on, I want to get involved or I want to start an agency, and there are applications that you can do. Uh, You can also call 565-8121 and ask to talk to Connie Bledsoe. She leads that effort for us. She takes care of all of our agencies, and she can talk with you about where you're located, what you're wanting to do, give you suggestions on how to go about getting started uh, with us, or maybe even joining up with another pantry in your area uh, that's more close to you and strengthening what they're doing. Both of you have your part in that work. All right. Randy, let me give you a chance for one minute or less. Anything you want to contribute before we have to go? I would just say this. Thank you for the opportunity, and I'm grateful for Rhonda and the programs that she does. We've partnered for years now, and I'm excited about the food bank. And I'd say to every father out there, at the end of the day, be better today than you were yesterday. And that's the goal. One day at a time being better than you were. Very good. All right. Well, you've been, uh, you've been listening to the Kim Hammer show with Rhonda Sanders with the food bank of central Arkansas, which there are six that are spread throughout the state. So if you're watching on Facebook, uh, go to your local one. And if you want to go up to our website, Ben Bowers over here is working on getting the uh, food bank address up there. So you can follow them as well as uh, Randy's information with Better Dads. Randy Jumper with Better Dads has been on the Kim Hammer Show today talking about uh, being a better dad, especially with this being Father's Day weekend. I just want to give a shout-out to finish up to uh, the sponsors made the show possible today, which is Everett Buick GMC down Saline County on I-30 there at the Elko Overpass. Great place for you to get a new vehicle or to get a pre-certified used vehicle. Phillips Penfield Mountie Real Estate, appreciate you guys. Edwards Food Store, as always, don't forget next weekend, Carrie Murphy on Saturday, Sunday at the Benton Event Center for the Carrie Murphy Production Gun Show. You can go down and stock up on a lot of supplies as well. Tomorrow I'll be back on the radio at 1 o'clock, bringing you a message on Father's Day, so I invite you back tomorrow at noon here on 101.1 FM, The Answer. This is the Kim Hammer Show, and this is Kim Hammer saying thank you for listening. 
101.1 FM. The Answer. KDXE FM. Kamek Village, Little Rock. A Salem Media Group station. 101.1 FM. The Answer. non-religious organizations and groups use our materials as well okay hey can you hold over for a minute through the bottom of the hour we need to take a quick break can you hang on a second absolutely forcing anything on you in fact if anything back after the break you're listening to the kim hammer show here on 101.1 fm the answer the saline county gun and knife show will be 